So I've built my own studio and today I'm going to answer three of the common questions I've been asked while posting about the build. So let's get stuck into it. So firstly, the first thing, well, what is it? I've basically got a, a lock-up hanger and we've built a studio because of where we are in England. Sometimes the weather's not great and it stops us from doing what we want. And also we want to evolve the channel a little bit more. We want to start doing some technology stuff. We want to do more challenges and things like that. And just having the sim allows us to collect more data and also have a space to come and think about ideas and things like that. The first question that a lot of you asked is all relative to size and what sort of size do you need for a studio like this? Well, firstly, this is a Foresight Europe performance sim in a box simulator and the size width as you can see and if you think back as well I used to have one in my garage and at that point I could only swing a four iron. I could literally get a four iron and I was very close to the wall. If I was gonna hit woods, I didn't have space for the GC2 um, to get in there and actually use the simulator. So currently, in terms of size width, this one is 3.85 meters across and then it's 2.75 meters above. Now, if you were gonna go down the Foresight route, they can be custom built. And it's quite funny when I've chatted with the guys and girls over there about putting all this together and I did build this by myself. Uh, they do recommend two people, which after taking about seven hours to do it on my own and feeling like I'd moved boulders, I definitely recommend getting two people to do it. One of the first things that they would say and sort of the question of how much space do you need, at 3.85 meters, if I were literally to grab my driver out of my bag, I can stand here all day long. I've got at least a meter here across and I can stand and actually swing the golf club with no issue knowing that I'm not gonna hit anything. Now, one of the things I would suggest, if you're looking to build your own sim, first thing that you need to do in the space that you do and obviously the way the world's gone now and people working from home and things like that and looking to convert spaces either in the garage a spare room up in the attic an old barn or whatever it may be the first thing i would suggest doing is basically go get a golf club go to the space that you would want to build your simulator in and just have some really slow motion swings if it was thinking well i'll probably tee off around in this area and just really slowly have a look at the space around you because like i say when i've chatted to the people at foresight the amount of times they get asked well how much room do i need and they say well you're on the phone now yeah go and get a club see what you can do and um, what you want to be aware of is your height clearance so we've not got a height clearance here it's basically 10 or 11 feet up um, as we're going to the first little stanchion then we've got extra room up above that and then you want your width clearance as you're going through if you think of the arc of your golf swing are you going to hit anything behind this actually the wall i've had that put in just to separate where the toilet is and the sink so it's not on video we want it aesthetically pleasing for you when you're watching the video so i've had that put in the actual rooms four and a half meters wide i think so at 3.85 i've got more than enough room but that would be my first tip go and check how much space you have by actually swinging a golf club and it might be that you can only swing a five iron like i did uh, when i had my garage set up and it was okay i still had the software and it meant i could hit balls and practice um, and obviously everyone's different with limitation of space. So that would be at 3.85, 2.75 up here. But first tip, go and check with a club. Swing slowly, don't have a full, sweet, a full speed swing to start off with. Um, just go through it slowly and then you'll be able to check it out. So the software that I'm using as well when we've got the image projected up there, that's the Foresight Sports software and everything that um, you see is basically coming through the laptop there and I'll get into prices of everything at the moment but before we get into that what I want to do to christen the sim I'm going to have three shots at my favorite golf course in the world which is Carnoustie I'm going to go on the infamous Hogan's Alley Hole and see if I can blast one 350 yards down the fairway 
So I'm going to hit the three shots now. The Before I do though, the launch monitor that I've been using is the GC2. Um, currently, that only does ball data for me, and obviously as a coach, I want a little bit more, and that's where Foresight have got the new GC3 coming out, which does some club data as well. Obviously, you could go top level and go quad, which is quite a bit more expensive, but the GC3 is almost like a smaller version of the quad. It gives you all the ball data that the GC2 does, but then adds in, I think it's four to five data points on the club, um, angle of attack, I think it gives you path, um, and a few others, I'll list those here on the side, what it does actually do, but I will be, I've got one of those on order, so it'll be sort of end of Jan, hopefully that comes through, and especially with the coaching and the tech videos, I think that'll give us just that extra little bit, especially I think from the coaching standpoint, when I'm talking through some of my coaching videos and I'm telling you about maybe how to hit an iron, it's gonna help you in that sense because we can show what, you know, the difference of a fat shot to a well-struck shot will look like, determined by the club data. So I'm excited to get that in and again, just evolve everything we're doing. We've, you know, we've done it great and you've really enjoyed it at the moment. And I, I just wanna give more and make sure that everyone's covered and can understand it and learn more and just get better at the game. But without further ado, three shots, Hogan's Alley. When I did play this in person, it was wind off the left, so it was quite nice. So you just start it over the out of bounds and bring it back in. I didn't hit it 350 though, because it was uh, freezing cold. So today, we're gonna get one. We're gonna get one 350 down Mr. Hogan's Alley. Ball one, let's see how we go. He's not only gone and done it first shot, has he? Perfect little draw. Oh, that felt, that felt juicy. Go on. Oh, a bit bottomy. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I've had it 300 yards into a gorse bush. Um, but you know, at least when I played it in person, I did hit the fairway, I can, I can, I can, take that with me but you know that's the simulator there and that's the beauty of the foresight one we can get any course around the world load them up and go and practice on those ones and i think it'll be good and what i want to try and do i'm in talks with the guys there at the moment to try and maybe set up a little bit of a competition that i can create and i compete with people who are able to get access to the things like this so i'm pretty excited and hopefully that'll come off let's take a look at the next question that i want to answer for you so the next most common question is all to do with price and everyone's budget's different. You could go out and spend hundreds of thousands of pounds and build an absolutely state-of-the-art practice academy if you want. You might actually just want a net and before we had the, uh, the sim unit in here, we actually did have just a net. So I had the space and I was waiting for the sim unit to arrive and I had some... Um, access to the nets that Foresight do. So I was able to use the projector and the, the software on the computer and still test stuff. And as you will have seen some videos from there, hopefully we had the image overlaid, but it might be that you only have space for a little net and you may only have space to go and do it in your garden. But like I say, everyone's budget is different. There's a couple of things that I would want you to think about though, um, if you were going to you know, invest in a SIM unit. So firstly, if you thought of like your SIM, if we think of like projector, laptop, um, the screen and everything like that, that's very personal. So I'm not, I'm not gonna put a price there because for what someone could spend, you could start out at like, I don't know, a thousand pounds maybe and go up, but there's a link in the bio um, for that one that you can go down and see everything and they can actually build them to your space as well. So a bit like where I have my garage space, you could build a net that would be a little bit smaller um, and have that actually custom built for your space. So it's not a case of it's 4,000 pounds. Check the link, see what they've got to offer and you can get different packages there. Um, a couple of other things that you would have to think about, like if we, we've got the floor here, obviously we've, we've um, turfed the floor. So on turf, I spent, um, I think it was 280 pounds. Again, all relevant to your size and space. Lighting is a big one. Obviously we're doing this for YouTube and making videos. You might just be doing it to hit balls at home, but you still need a little bit of light. I've, God, um, I think again, we've spent nearly 200 quid on lights. 
just to make sure that we've got the right lighting in here. Um, for me, soundproofing, I've got a little bit more to go up, it's just waiting to arrive. But again, um, so that's like insulation and, um, good spelling Matt, insulation and soundproofing, I've spent close to, I think again, that's around 250 so far, and I probably need to spend a little bit more as we go through. Um, technology wise, you can get, again, as part of like that SIM link, I would say, you've got a GC2, which I'm using. We are gonna progress into a GC3. We're just waiting for those to arrive in England. Um, so that's the step below the quad. If you look at a quad, I think somewhere around about 15,000 as an entry point. GC2 at the moment, round about seven or eight, and I think the three might come in a little bit less, but link for all that. Computer wise, you need things like that that you're gonna go and spend on. But even then things like little storage units, like my butt, obviously if you're at home practicing, you're not gonna need one of these or building the wall, cost me 400 quid to get someone in to do that and all those little bits. But I think when I went into it, especially when I did it at home the first time, I thought, oh, I'll just stick a SIM up in my garage. It'll be X amount. And there was all these little extras. So I think those bits, are your added extras that you would have to think about and if you were to you know get a consultation on one ask those questions um, but again you might just want a net that you could basically not have the projected image you could watch it on a laptop so you would hit your ball and look back at the laptop you might not want to see it on that you might not think well it's not worth the extra expense so it's all very relevant to everyone's budget but um, it's, yeah, it's totally up to you, but think about those extra costs that you might incur. Don't just think, oh, I'll go into it and then all of a sudden be shocked if they start cropping up. So the third question of, is it worth it? And I probably should caveat that uh, with who for, is it worth it? And is it worth it for me? Depends on what level of golf you've got. Again, I think a lot of the sim builds are all to do with where your budget lies, what space availability you have, and what you want it for. If it's simply just to keep swinging, like when we had the net in here, I think that's a great way because you can still practice without the visual feedback. You will be a little bit limited, but there are ways that you can utilize a net, whether it's tempo training, working on your strike, um, working on maybe you have video lessons and you're, you're working with a coach over the internet, they're good for that. Then you might be someone who thinks, well, time short, I can't get out to the golf course as much. I'm gonna jack my golf club membership and what I would have spent on that, I'm gonna invest in building a little sim room. Um, and then there's people who you know might have unlimited budgets and they just think, I want a sim room. It'll be great for me and my mates to entertain and things. And it's, it's all down to you, but is it worth it for me? Obviously, yes. As, doing videos i think it is good but before just going out and thinking i need everything i would have a look at you know what's your reasoning for do it why um why you like what's your reasoning why you are going to do it how much space you have and how much um sort of value you think you're going to get into it if you think well I'll, I'll be practicing every week you go and buy everything and then you you don't use it it's probably not worth it for you it might be that you do it in stages start with the net have the laptop and the unit and then project progress to the big screen and the sim and everything like that but for me Obviously, I think it's great that we're going to be able to take the channel even further now, provide even more information to help you get better at golf and see different things, test different clubs that we've got um, here in the studio and just be able to do more and more, which is obviously worth it for me. So yeah, overall, like I say, make sure you check out the link, be aware of those little hidden costs that do come into building a studio check that um, that uh, space that you've got by swinging a golf club and then start getting some measurements. There is not a definitive answer to, you need X and Y for height and width. Obviously, if you've got over three meters up and across, you're, you're spot on. But overall, that is the sim. That is what we're gonna be doing. Hope you enjoy the videos from here and uh, let me know if you wanna see any videos related to maybe practicing in a sim, how you can utilize one and whatever you wanna do, hit me in the comments below and I'll see you in a video very soon.